Cloth simulation in Unreal Engine 5 has become a lot easier and more powerful with the new cloth asset. In today's video, we're going to bring our custom clothes from Blender into Unreal Engine to set up the simulation, add a highly detailed kinetic collider, tweak the simulation physics settings, and then do some simulation on the pants. Let's have a look. Here we are in Unreal Engine with my Amber character doing a cloth physics animation. As you can see, it looks a bit stiff since we don't have any physics on the pants, but we're going to fix that today. We're going to use the new Chaos Cloth asset introduced in Unreal Engine 5.3. To start, let's enable the plugins. Head over to Settings, Plugins. Search for Chaos, and here you will find the Chaos Cloth asset, the Chaos Cloth asset editor as well as Chaos Cloth. Make sure these are enabled and restart the engine. Let's right click and go to Physics and here you can find the Cloth Asset. You can also find the Data Flow Asset, but the Cloth Asset will automatically create the Data Asset file when you open up the Cloth Asset Editor. So down here you can see the Data Flow Asset open in a graph view. Up in the center, we have our two viewports, one for the simulation and one for the like final results. Over in the preview scene details, you can change your preview mesh, as well as the background settings and lighting and stuff. I'm going to go over this very quickly. As you probably also can see, we already have a bunch of nodes in the node graph, which is great. Unreal actually gives us a template to start with. So it's actually just a matter of switching out a few nodes to get you started very quickly. The template Unreal provides is set up for a USD workflow from Marvelous Designer. However, we're going to use our CC4 character. This means that you can use any mesh, whether it's from CC4, Blender, Maya, doesn't really matter. Using the GoB workflow I've previously discussed in another video, I'm going to import my character from CC4 to Blender to extract the pants. We're basically going to need three exports from Blender. We're going to need a render mesh, a simulation mesh, as well as a collider mesh. We'll start with the render mesh. So I'm going to apply a subdivision surface. And here you can see the topology of the pants. It doesn't need to be quads because Unreal Engine will convert it into triangles anyways, but it needs to be a decent topology so it can bend in a natural way. Let's export this as an FBX and we'll call this amber underscore pants underscore render for the render mesh version one in case we need to do increments. I'm going to select only the pants and check face smoothing for the geometry, which is common practice in our red engine. Next, let's hide the pants by using H to reveal the underlying geometry. Here, I'm going to select all of the faces which I think the pants are going to collide with. I'm going to select more faces than I probably need, in case you need to increase the number of faces that the pants are colliding with. Then let's separate these faces from the main body by using Alt-P. As you can see here, it's separated from the body. This will be our collider mesh, which the pants are going to collide with. Let's export this as an FBX. Let's create a new folder called Collision and name the export to amber underscore pants underscore collision version 1. For the simulation mesh, we don't want thick geometry. That basically means that we don't want geometry which is folding. We only want like a thin tube. And I'll also demonstrate a before and after in case you forget to do this step. These pants you can also leave as unsubdivided, so revert the subdivision that we did previously. Let's go to export, and then FBX. Let's create a new folder called simulation, then name this file to amber underscore pants underscore simulation, or sim for short. It's time to import our free meshes. So let's create folders for the render mesh, the simulation mesh, and the collision mesh. Let's start with our collision mesh. Make sure that combined meshes is set to true in case you import this as a static mesh. I also recommend not creating a material for each import as we're going to use the material from the pre-existing characters pants instead for better optimization. 
let's open up the cloth asset once again. And here we will right click in the node graph and create a static mesh import in order to import our meshes into the node graph. This will first be our simulation mesh. Then we're going to do another one, static mesh import. Let's add a render for this. In the simulation node, let's select our simulation mesh from Blender. And the other one for the render node, select our render mesh from Blender. You can also probably see that we get a warning over to the right that we haven't set up our LODs yet. But today I'm going to skip this part. I'm just going to remove uh, those nodes so we don't see that warning anymore. In the simulation node, let's uncheck import render mesh. And let's do the opposite in the render mesh node. Only import the render mesh, but not the simulation mesh. Now we can think of these two collections as layers. So we basically need to merge these two layers into one layer so we can uh, keep working on it downstream in the node graph. So let's drag out a pin and create a merge cloth collections. This only has one pin by default. Let's right click on the collection and add a option pin to add more inputs. Then let's hook this up to the transform positions node. Over to the right, you can now see our imported render mesh. However, it sits on top of the pre-existing uh, pans, so that's why it looks a bit wonky. Now the meshes that we imported, they don't have any skin weights, so we're going to transfer the skin weights from our character over to our static meshes, so they can bend along with the character. We're going to select our character as the skeletal mesh target, and our static meshes automatically gets the skin weights from the nearest vertex. The next node is to paint our weight map. And if you've done any cloth simulation before, this might look very familiar to you. Black indicates no simulation at all. White indicates that the pants will be simulated here. And then we're going to do a gradient between the black and white so the fall off becomes a bit smoother. Over in the cloth panel, you can change various brush sizes, various brush tools. Next, let's address the overlapping geometry. The official documentation actually recommends that you do this directly on top of the body. However, I've actually gotten better results when using a character with clothes. So we're going to leave our unsimulated clothes on the body, get the skin weights from the clothes, and then just hide the clothes instead. This is perhaps a bit less optimized, but it works better in my opinion. So let's find our character in the content browser. Let's go to materials and create a new material, which will be basically just an invisible material. Let's change it to a masked material in the properties and lower the opacity to zero. In our skeletal mesh editor, let's change the material of the pants to a invisible material. That means that all of the vertices and faces are still there, they're just invisible in the render. Let's apply a temporary animation so we can see our physics. As you can see, we have some physics on our pants. However, they're not colliding with anything, which is a major issue. So we're going to fix that now. We're going to insert our collider all the way at the end of the chain. Let's right click in the node graph and search for static mesh import once again to import our collider mesh from Blender. We're going to add collision to the node name in order to keep things organized. Let's select our collision mesh. Same thing here as of right now, this is just a static mesh. We need to get the skin weights from the character. So let's do a transfer skin weights, select our character, and the skin weights from our character is transferred to our collider mesh. Next, we need to select which faces are actually active as colliders. For that, we're going to need a cloth selection node. Let's click away and click on the node again, and drag select which faces that we think the pants are going to collide with. 
You can use a larger area if you want. However, it's going to slow things down a bit if you have a lot of faces to do a selection within reason. Make sure that you add a name to your selection because Unreal is going to reference this name down the chain. Finally, let's add the node that actually calculates the collision. Search for simulation self collision config. The one in the middle here is the one that we want. Let's hook up the name output to the self collision enabled kinetic faces. We're going to need inputs for the two bottom ones as well. And what we want to input here is the weight map that we drew earlier. So let's go all the way back to the beginning of the node graph and get the name output of our node from the max distance and connect it to our collision config. Finally, same thing as before, we need to merge our layers, which we're going to do with the merge cloth collection. Let's merge our pants with our collider. Then let's hook this up to our solver. As you can see, we actually got the render mesh from the, for the collider as well. We don't want that. So let's go back to the static mesh import for the collider and turn off the render mesh to hide it. Now let's play our animation. You can see the cool collision with the legs. Here I'm also demonstrating how the simulation looks if you keep the folds meaning the simulation mesh is thick and not a thin layer, you get this strange yittering on the edges of the pants. So just make sure that your pants are clear, thin tubes and you will get the best possible simulation. You can of course tweak the cloth physics. So let's start with the simulation mass config. Here you can change how flowy or dense the cloth is. So if you increase this value, the pants will become more flowy and more weighty. We also have the simulation stretch config where you can tweak how stretchy the fabric is. So if you decrease the stretch weft and warp, you can see how the fabric stretches and retracts. Tweak this as required. Finally, you can also adjust the simulation damping config, which lets you control how bendy the fabric is. So if we increase this value, the pants will become stiffer in how much the fabric can fold. When you're done, let's go out to the sequencer once again. Let's drag in our amber character, which now has pants that are invisible. So we're going to need to add our cloth asset as a component to our skeletal mesh. You can do that over here by selecting add and adding a new cloth, chaos cloth component. Let's rename this to pants and select our amber cloth asset. Let's also assign the already created pants material. And if we play this back, you won't see any simulation. And that's this because we need to simulate the viewport as well. You do that over here select simulate and now everything will be simulated and we can play our animation with the pants simulating in real time. Initially I thought that it would be a lot harder to work with the new cloth asset but it turned out that this workflow was actually a lot easier and more powerful to work with. Especially grateful for the template that Unreal provides explaining what each node does in the data flow asset. After this in the next video we're going to add a piece of garment and see how we can set up the coat so it interacts and collides with the pants. So if you're interested in learning more advanced cloth simulation in Unreal Engine, make sure to subscribe. As always, if you have any questions, write them down below. Thank you so much for watching and goodbye.